May the Lord uncover his face to you and bring you peace. My dear sisters and brothers, I take this opportunity to wish you, our listeners, a very Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year 2023. On this first day of the calendar year, we celebrate not just the beginning of the new year, but also many other things. The eighth day of the Christmas octave. That is why I wished you a Merry Christmas. We also celebrate the solemnity of Mary, Mother of God. This first day of the new year is dedicated to our Blessed Mother. We are also celebrating today the World Day of Prayer for Peace. In effect, the theme of peace permeates the Christmas season as seen in the liturgical texts and carols. At his birth, angels were singing, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Jesus is also addressed as the Prince of Peace. Our Blessed Mother, whom we celebrate today, is the Mother of God, the Mother of the Prince of Peace. No wonder the church calls her Queen of Peace. At the beginning of this new year, I would love for us to reflect on peace, which is essential for our nations and for our world in general. As I said above, today is the World Day of Peace. So the World Day of Prayer for Peace. Pope Paul VI established this day in the year 1967, being inspired by the encyclical Pacem in Terris of Pope John XXIII and with his own encyclical Populorum Progressio. The first World Day of Peace was first observed on January 1st, 1967. Pope Paul VI in 1968 said, The world must be educated to love peace, to build it up, and to defend it. I pray that God may bless us with this gift of peace in our world today, and especially in countries that need it most. I would like you today to move along with me on the journey towards peace. In effect, we are on a journey bound for the kingdom where God's justice and peace are the governing order and reigning assumptions. On this first day of the year, the first reading from Numbers chapter 6 begins with the blessing that the Lord gave Moses for the Israelites. This is indeed the blessing that God gives to all humankind. The blessing God is giving to you and me today. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord uncover his face to you and bring you peace. The book of Exodus tells us how the Israelites left Egypt and arrived at Mount Sinai. All through the next book, that is the Leviticus, the Israelites remained at the foot of the mountain. They did not move. There was uncertainty, reluctance, confusion, and even fear. In the book of Numbers, from which today's first reading is taken, the Israelites begin to move once again. They set out from Mount Sinai and they traveled as far as the borders of the promised land when they arrived at the plains of Moab. Thus, the book of Numbers is a journey, a journey narrative. It tells how the Israelites conquered their fears and journeyed on and even began to conquer and occupy territory. Numbers chapter 21 verse 25. 
The first 10 chapters of this book of Numbers are devoted to preparation for the journey. They are prepared by prayer, organization, and planning, and then set out. Today's first reading is taken from this first part, which is about getting ready to set out on the journey towards the promised land. So today, the 1st of January, we are on a journey to the year 2023. It's a journey in the new year. One of the key events of this preparation is the blessing for the journey. A prayer composed by God. The Bible is full of psalms and prayers composed by human beings. But this is the first time we are seeing a prayer composed by God and given to humans to be addressed to the same God. Because Numbers chapter 6 verse 27 tells us that this is how they shall put my name on the children of Israel and I will bless them. As shown above, the first reading gives us three blessings. First of all, may the Lord bless you and keep you. If you are listening to me, say amen. May the Lord let his face shine on you and be gracious to you. Another amen. May the Lord uncover his face to you and bring you peace. I need another amen. Can there really be peace? May the Lord uncover his face to you and bring you peace. We are talking about peace. Is there peace? Can there be peace? Peace has been menaced these days in the world by the canker worm of terrorism. We hear of Boko Haram, we hear of Al-Shabaab, ISIS, unstable governance, dictatorship, violence, corruption, and you can give me the rest. We think of the displaced refugees because there is no peace in their countries and in their towns of origin. We think of many families that are displaced without shelter. At the family level, Peace has been sacrificed on the altar of broken marriages, disobedient and wayward children, land and property disputes, jealousy, and you can name the rest. These are dark moments of our lives which the illuminating light of peace can dispel. So I continue to pray. May the Lord uncover his face to you and bring you peace. Amen. Peace features so much in the prayers and the vocabulary of most world religions. Our liturgy speaks so much of peace. Peace is re-echoed in the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. In the prayers of the, our Father, Paternoste, after the prayers, we hear the priest saying, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. Then follows the prayer for peace. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Then we hear, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Then we end the Lamb of God saying, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. In dismissing the congregation in the church, the priest says, go in peace. So many prayers in the church have the word peace. Christ, through his birth, brings us peace and has given us peace. And we must give this peace to the world. 
What kind of peace do we give others today? Let us start right here. Wherever you are, the person close to you, do you greet that person? At Mass in church, when the priest invites us to say, let us offer each other the sign of peace, do we really mean peace? If you turn around and meet your enemy in church, can you give her, can you give him true peace? The coronavirus pandemic has made it now so easy for enemies to sit together in church. This is because you just need to wave your hands and your neighbors will not notice that you have not greeted your neighbor. The blessing of peace today is not just all about waving hands to greet. It does goes. May the Lord uncover his face to you and bring you peace. Say amen. The New American Bible translates this as, The Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace. It does not just end with the waving of hand. It involves showing our real faces and giving a kind look to the neighbor. The blessing does communicates the heart of God in providing true peace from the heart. As Paul tells us, and provides peace. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 4 verse 7. My dear people of God, dear sisters and brothers, we are familiar with the prayer of peace of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Every person has to make an effort to be an instrument of peace. We also need to work together to build a real culture of peace in our society. It begins with me as an instrument of peace. We are beautiful messengers working for peace. That's why Isaiah would tell us in Isaiah chapter 52 verse 7, How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace. Whenever you announce peace, you are beautiful. Your feet are beautiful. These words were echoed in the first reading on Christmas Day. I would like to encourage all of us to be people who are instruments of God's peace consciously. If we do this, then we will be blessed. Matthew tells us in the Beatitudes, in Matthew chapter 5 verse 9, Blessed are the peacemakers. Wow, you are blessed when you make peace. Do you want to be blessed? When you make peace, then they shall be called children of God. If we do not work for peace, we risk taking the world to annihilation. When looking at the modern world, one still sees a flood of blood. That is why his lordship, Jean Bosco Ntep of Edea, Cameroon, observed in the preface to a book in 2009, that we are in a modernity where murder, massacre, extermination, world wars, the unimaginable absurdity of the, of the Shoah, the genocide of the Tutsis in Rwanda, give the measure of the world's inhumanity. To this, let us add Boko Haram. Let us add the current crisis in different parts of Africa like in Cameroon, like in the north of Nigeria, and in many places where things have been turned, where our, our, our land has been turned into bloodshed, killing, and kidnapping for ransom. In a keynote address, Ella Gandhi does opines that violence is a spiral. Nonviolence brings lasting solution. 
If you tackle the same issues on a non-violent basis, you stop the violence. Seeing the almost unending concatenation of violent events and the stories in the African continent, one tends to agree with Ella. Africa has a tragic history of suffering in many ramifications. Our countries, there is a lot of suffering because of lack of peace and because of the violence of war. I'm tempted to say that we are not only in a spiral of violence, but like Martin Luther King Jr., we are at a descending spiral, as Martin Luther King Jr. would tell us. It's not only a spiral, it's a descending one. He tells us that the ultimate weakness of violence lies in the fact that it is a descending spiral begetting the very thing it seeks to destroy. The ultimate weakness of violence is that it is a descending spiral begetting the very thing it seeks to destroy. I say it with emphasis. So instead of diminishing evil, it multiplies it. You may murder the liar through violence, but you cannot murder the lie or establish the truth. You may murder the hater through violence, but you do not murder the hate. In fact, violence merely increases and violence increases hate. It says violence merely increases hate. So it goes. Returning violence for violence multiplies violence, adding deeper darkness to a night already devoid of stars. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. With all these observations, we quickly go back to the third blessing, which I announced at the beginning. May the Lord uncover his face to you and bring you peace. Amen. How is the face of God like? God's face is kind. God's face is peaceful. It is worth noting that reconciliation is another name for peace. And it's another name for the face of God. My dear sisters and brothers, dear people of God, let us pray for lasting peace in our countries, in the world at large. We are to work together to build this lasting peace. The words, may the Lord uncover his face to you and bring you peace, is a compelling promise from God. And we must passionately work for that, work towards peace. In effect, Martin Luther King Jr. warns us seriously that we talk passionately about peace and at the same time, we assiduously prepare for war. We hear people talking about peace. The same people tell us about peace, prepare for war. We make our fervent pleas for the high road of justice and then we tread the low road of injustice unflinchingly. The strange dichotomy, this agonizing gulf between the earth and the east represents the tragic theme of man's earthly pilgrimage. This means that we must consciously stop preparing for war and learn the language of peace and dialogue. Dialogue consists in listening to each other, discussing, agreeing, working together, fostering all of this between generations means tilling the hard and barren soil of conflict and rejection to cultivate the scene of lasting and shared peace. Therefore, through dialogue, we become reconciled. And indeed, peace and reconciliation become two sides of the same points. My dear sisters and brothers, as we begin this year, I just wish to invite you to cultivate the habit of peace. It is an appropriate time for us to dedicate ourselves to pursuing peace in the world. Conflict and trouble are destroying many people. As Christians, all of us 
are called to pray for peace and always work hard to champion the cause for peace. This peace we need in our world in this time of trouble is very necessary forever. Life continues, but it must be in an atmosphere of peace. For peace is the blessing that we need from the church, from our government, from our work areas, from our schools, from our brothers, from our sisters, of all works of life. May God continue to bless you with his peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.